What's up guys, Mr. Dan, back again with another uh, sort of a haul, uh, mostly from Hamilton Books. I have a few things here from an earlier haul, windy out, from uh, Full Moon, from the Full Moon sale. I never actually followed through with a video about that, so I might incorporate some of those. And uh, kind of a uh, eclectic haul. It is Hamilton Books after all, they do have books and other things. So let's get into it. First, let me just mention briefly two things that I picked up from, uh, I believe, uh, Target. Target or Walmart and or Walmart. Not going to go too heavy into this, but I think you've heard of this by now. Antlers, okay, produced by Guillermo del Toro. Uh, quite a number of reviews out there now. This was kind of an impulse buy for me. I did the same thing with the new Candyman movie. I was, you know, trying not to listen to anyone's reviews of it. Went out and bought it. Don't regret doing that. Almost borderline regret doing buying this one without seeing it first. Um, you know, I'm not a huge physical media guy. I'm clamping down. Like, I got this thing haul from Hamilton Books. I'm, I got plenty to watch and read, which I've been meaning to get more into. Back into. And, uh, so yeah. So the, you, things will be trickling in from now on. Uh, I'm taking advantage of this week off to, to shoot some reviews. Uh, it may be, this may be like uh, two weeks in the future when you see this, I don't know. Anyway, I liked it. Uh, you know, there was like, it got pushed back, so there was like a, so for me, there was like a, an aura of mystery about it. Like, what's it about? I mean, it wasn't hard to figure. It shouldn't have been hard to figure out. It's called Antlers. People were saying it was about a Wendigo, so I'm not sure why I was in the dark. Well made, well acted. Uh, the setting is good. It really gives you a sense of place. Uh, you know, if you want to, if you want to uh, watch the uh, a review on the "What Did I Just Watch?" channel by Lady Shasha, you know she, her her uh, criticisms are usually very incisive and well informed. She doesn't take pot shots at movies. You know she there's a she has a negative thing to say. There's a reason. Uh, one of the I said it was well acted. Graham Greene. At this stage in his career, he's a, you know, more than a veteran actor. He's he's fantastic. Uh, he's been around a while, but he does play almost like a stereotypical character. He's so stoic about it, though. You almost he does as good a job as you can possibly do playing that kind of role. He's one of the few native characters, the only native character, I think, and he's pretty much comes in and explains things, just the way in a lot of horror movies. You know, I always say it's either like the German grandma or the or the or the maid who's from like you know puerto rico who will come in and explain things to the family and that's pretty much why they're there it's pretty good the other one i thing i picked up five bucks two godzilla movies uh i got my son into all the legendary uh the monsterverse films we starting with the kong skull island one friday afternoon i came home and decided to be a cool dad and said hey let's go let's go buddy he was like, what? Yeah. Wasn't something he would ask me to get into, but since then we've seen them all, but he never did see uh, the original, the 2014 Godzilla. Might be a little anticlimactic after seeing all these monsters go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but we'll watch it one of these days. I also want to watch the original with him. And now let's get into the horror movies I got in. I'm thinking about doing, doing like a monkey versus monkey, a snake versus snake. I don't know. Spider versus Spider. Kingdom of the Spiders versus uh, the Deadly Cargo. Tarantulas, the Deadly Cargo. Monkey Shines, which I saw for the first time a while ago. You know, was well aware of it. So I thought maybe I'd do a review where I put that up against Shakma. Okay. Full screen presentation. I, they're saying that like it's a special... Okay, so today I don't have any glasses on. But I need should have my reading glasses, which I... Can't find. So, uh, special features, yeah. Full screen presentation. Uh, it's not as, like, a, when it, uh, I don't, does that mean it's all that's available? I don't know. I, obviously, giving my choice, I'd rather have the widescreen. Professor Sorensen, the head of a university med school, organizes a live action role playing game for several of his students using the laboratory building after hours. But after they're all locked in and the game begins, Shakma. A crazed, genetically mutated 
Lad Baboon escapes and begins killing the players. Okay. Uh, maybe I, there, what's, I know there's a few other uh, baboon-oriented horror movies. The sub-sub-sub-genre of animals uh, run amok. The baboon run amok. So maybe that would be better against one of those, that, like that one in Africa, which is based on a true story, but the, the drought that drives the baboons to attack people. I don't I forget what that's called. Next, I just mentioned this in a, in a he mentioned a night, Train to Busan came up on the Night Watch Zone the other night, so I said, hey, uh, he just came on for a daytime stream today. And I couldn't help it, I had to jump on, uh, of course. Um, but I, the first thing I asked, hey, have you, anyone heard of Rampant? Okay, from the producers of Train to Busan. Okay, it's a period piece, obviously you can see by the, the clothing, involving zombies. Game of Thrones meets 28 Days Later, says some reviewer. I can't even begin to read that small. Wow, this is pretty small. Here, I can read some of it. A fresh new take on the zombie horror film from the studio that brought you Train to Busan. There's, a there's like a zombie outbreak in uh, ancient Korean times. There you go. Um, they had a monster movie kind of a thing in ancient Korean times. What was that called? Monster? I couldn't get into that. I think that was on Netflix. Next. Got a lot of not. I'm already into the... Okay. I mentioned before I was getting some Wild Eye movies from... Hamilton books, but Wild Eyes, whole separate category, separate videos, okay. Um, next, action. So, and funny, somebody out of the blue on, I forget which video. It may have been my uh, Murphy's Law video. This would make sense that it was this one. They were like, are you ever gonna do any Chuck Norris movies? There's a couple, you know. Originally, I wasn't planning on it, but when you, a lot of people get excited about talking about old Chuck. So, uh, yeah, I want to go back and revisit some of those. And sure enough, they had this, the ultimate action collection. Cannon, cannon, that cannon symbol. That's what I mentioned in the, my Murphy's Law review, which is on YouTube. Please go back and check it out. Charles Bronson movie from the 80s from Cannon Group. I mean, it's like gold, right? You can't go wrong. Four of the eight are Chuck movies. Okay. Yeah, Missing in Action, Invasion USA, which I don't think I've ever seen. And I know it has Richard Lynch in it as the villain. Missing in Action 2 and Missing in Action 3, Braddock, the Braddock. Then you got one Van Damme, which is Cyborg. Watched that in a hotel room once when we went to uh, the Jersey Shore. Just fond memories of that. Somehow I had never seen it before then. But that, even that was years ago. Death Wish 2, a single Bronson entry and then you have two uh lesser known films you've got ninja 3 the domination and exterminator 2 now exterminator 2 i believe that is robert a robert ginty movie which that you got to go deep into the 80s for that you had you had like the wings hauser vengeance movies wait with the over with the voice over wings hauser is something something justice extermination you know you just Rogue Cop. You know, then years later, I, was, I saw him on uh, when Mystery Science Theater did the uh, that movie Mutant. And <laughs> he's talking about like I, I like my croissants this way. It kind of took a little bit of the. The aura of tough guyness are off of him. Okay, and of course he's a character actor. Why am I talking about Wings Hauser? He's not in any of these. Anyway, Robert Ginty is almost like the poor man's Wings Hauser. Who could be like the poor man Stallone. I don't know. Jesus, what am I talking about? Bronson, Norris, Van Damme, ninjas, flamethrowers. Okay. All the things that make life worth li living. Even though I flubbed that line, I have to agree. Next. Non-horror. Just mentioned this one in Nightwatch Zone. I know Coriander likes muscle cars, so I think a movie like Bullet. It'll be fun to do a bullet stream. Steve McQueen Bullet. This was like nothing. You know, this might be one I would show my son. We watched uh, Harry. 
we watched there. My son Harry and I watched Dirty Harry. So, you know, I'm trying to give him a little bit of sampling of this and that. So, I don't know if he knows who Steve McQueen is. But also, well, he might know him from my car collection. I collect cars. There's a company called Greenlight. It makes realistic models. I've got several bullet vehicles. Might make a nice display. Looking at, looking at this now, I'm like, why couldn't they get a better looking picture of Steve McQueen on there? Anyway. Abbott and Costello versus Meets the Mummy, okay? The one I really want is, uh, what is it, Frankenstein? The one that has all of them. That's the one I want. Uh, is that Dracula or Frankenstein? I think it's Frankenstein. The one that has uh, Glenn Strange and Bela Lugosi and Lon Chaney and a cameo by Vincent Price as the Invisible Man. That would, that's, I think, the best one of these comedy ones, but this, this is good. Sentimental favorite. I didn't... Okay, I didn't really watch it when it was on. My mom used to watch this. She used to love this show. I was so, when I went back and kind of looked into it, I was surprised at the, uh, who was in it. But Freaks and Geeks, classic. This is from, uh, I think, uh, Trace Bellew and Frank Conniff from Mystery Science Theater. The original Mads, I think they both were involved in this. Uh, and they both appeared in several episodes, as did Joel Hodgson. Uh, so... I mean, you gotta go way back. I mean, look at how young everybody is. Hawkeye's wife, I'm not even gonna talk about these three guys, you, you know who they are. Uh, he was in uh, Magnific uh, Inglorious Pastors, believe it or not, and then you got Peter Parker's uh, science teacher in the newer Spider-Man movies. I'm not sure what uh, he's been in. Daly, whatever his name is, John Daly. John Daly. Daly, Peter, John. Prince Peter Daly. Great show. Great show. Next. Okay, let's do this. Stick with the same media. I really think a niche for my channel might be anthology shows. Uh, I love all the. I love the Twilight Zone, Night Gallery. You guys have seen uh, on my Instagram. I've got some of the, the companion books. I like the more some of the more obscure ones, too. Outer Limits. Not that this is an obscure one, you know, getting to that. But the complete first volume of Outer Limits. It's not expensive at all, so you've got about 16 episodes, two discs. So, classic. And I got one that's a little more... Got one that's a little more obscure. Actually, I had never really heard of this, or if I had, I had forgotten it. A 12-part series. I'm not sure if that was a, it was a single season or it was intended to be uh, like a limited series, hosted by Anthony Perkins, okay, called Chiller. Okay. 12 Tales of Cold-Blooded Terror, starring a bunch of Ians. Ian McShane. I'm leaving. Anyway, Ian Holm, Ian Richardson, you also have Tuesday Well, Bill Nighy. So, should be interesting. There's Ian McShane right there. Not putting on makeup. And then, from my other uh, haul, from Full Moon, uh, you guys remember Masters of Horror. They did come out with a Masters of Science Fiction show. I was interested in, at the time, I remember watching part of one episode and not being too impressed, but this is the whole series. And it was like nothing to get this. Uh, so we're talking, actually it's kind of sad looking at it because we have some, a couple people that are no longer with us. Brian Dennehy is in, we got Brian Dennehy, John Hurt, uh, some solid actors anyway. Uh, Clifton Collins, Malcolm McDowell, James Cromwell, Sean Astin, Terry O'Quinn. So very solid actors. Uh, be interested to check that out. Books. X Files had a great X file stream on. Uh, there's been a couple of great X file streams out there. I know uh, Ethel had one on her channel, Thirteen Originals, and I know American Werewolf in New Jersey had one. And uh, you know, I just started talking about the old X Files show, Monster of the Week, the complete critical companion to the X Files. 
definitely worth checking out. Or I think it is. Definitely worth having. Definitely worth having is what I'm saying. The other thing I've been showing my son is an episode or two here of like classic shows. We watched uh, a couple of, one episode of the original Star Trek, you know, so I haven't watched maybe one or two episodes of the X-Files. My older son used to be scared of the theme music, but he's, he's all grown up now, so. Fargo. I think this is the first three seasons. Look at the size of this sucker. Again, not very expensive at all. From Full Moon. I mean, you can get some pretty good deals. It's just everything you want to know about Fargo. I love the show. Now, I haven't seen the fourth season yet with Chris Rock. So I need to do that. Okay. Well, that's about it for this haul. Uh, I may have missed a few things here. I know there's some things from my earlier Full Moon haul that... I haven't seen the light of day on this channel yet. I'll be hanging on to those and reviewing those. I'll be reviewing some of these. I hope you guys, I don't know, what do you guys think of these sort of conversational type videos? I'm not sure how often I can do it because it's completely quiet here now and that is not often the case. And I forgot, I, I said this was a multimedia uh, haul. I couldn't resist. These are available on YouTube, but you know, physical copies to take with you in the car. Whatever. Sometimes I download these on in, on my iPad and I bring them in the car. Uh, sometimes the volume is an issue, though, when I get to the highway. So, Twilight Zone radio dramas, okay? These are these are pretty fun. We've got only four episodes, which is surprising, like one per disc. That's not surprising, but uh, uh, Stacy Keach is the host, was the host of this series. Uh, yeah, and then they show the guest star, Jim Caviezel. There you got uh, Jane Seymour and James Keach, brother of. And then we got one with Lou Diamond Phillips. And then the other one is uh, Tim, <laughs> Tim Kazarinski, Mr. Dingle the Strong. I believe that was a Burgess Meredith per, uh, performance in the original series. So they're basically rehashing the original series. Some of them work better without the visuals than others. Uh, but I just thought it'd be kind of fun to, to have that as part of my anthology collection. So, uh, we'll see, but let me know. What do you think? Okay, anyway, I'll be back. Thanks.